What's up guys, it is uh, Justin and I'm here in uh, my uh, piece of a uh, piece of crap house uh, trying to get it uh, fixed up before I move in. Um, and if you can tell, I am uh, insulating and drywalling at one of the bedrooms of my house. So in this house I decided to go with uh, uh, mineral wool. Uh, the reason why is because uh, I want the uh, sound dampening qualities, it's eco-friendly, and um, also uh, it's, uh, it's hydrophobic, meaning that um, it, it's water resistant. Whereas if I was to get denim, which is a great product, but super unbelievably expensive, or, um, or just regular uh, fiberglass batting, um, it has a tendency to soak up water. So I want something that also um, uh, uh, was good against water, um, provided a lot of soundproofing, um, and then also uh, had great uh, insulating quality and was eco-friendly. And the thing that uh, fit all that criteria was uh, the mineral wool. Plus, um, it was a heck of a lot cheaper than the denim, um, but it was more expensive than the fiberglass. So R15 fiberglass, uh, to get the mineral wool, it's about 33% more per square foot. Um, and then denim only came in uh, R13. So value-wise, I thought it was the best bet, at least for this particular room. Um, but whatever you end up putting in your house is probably going to be eco-friendly because you're going to be saving energy either way. So you have to decide what is going to be the best uh, insulation for you. So when you are installing insulation, a few tips, okay? Um, mineral wool is not nearly as uh, itchy as fiberglass, but it's still pretty darn itchy. And you be a shin uh, like a, a mangy dog. Um, in summer when you're uh, when you're um, installing it. So that's why I'm covered up. I have an old lab coat from when I took chem and biochem um, that I wear and it does a pretty good job of keeping me protected and then also I have um, uh, some overalls as well too. Uh, you will also need uh, some kind of a respirator. Um, I have two different types here. I have a half mask. Okay. Um, and these have P100 uh, particular uh, filters um, because I'm also dealing with asbestos and lead in this house. Um, but if you're just installing the fiberglass, you probably don't need anything quite that heavy duty. N95s are just uh, um, something lighter, will probably be fine for the mineral wool. Um, so this is a half mask, and then you'll want to pair this up with um, some goggles as well, too. Um, I have these polycarbonate ones, and I have these old ones from back when I was in, a, in, a, in chem. Um, they're both uh, pretty good. Uh, the only thing is, uh, if you decide to go the polycarbonate ones, quick tip: I put some saran wrap over the top of them because they scratch really, really easy. Um, but um, if you can afford it, um, I would really recommend that you go a step up and go with the Breaking Bad style uh, full face mask. And the reason why is because. Um, First off, it's, it seals off better, um, so that way it's safer. And then also, uh, these have a tendency to, um, to fog up, and then I'm constantly like fighting all the time with, uh, um, with the fogging up of the goggles. So um, if you can do it, just pay the $120, um, which is probably about $100 more. Just go for the full face mask. It's totally worth it. You're gonna, it's an investment, and then um, you're gonna be using it all throughout your house. So definitely invest in a good respirator. Uh, uh, lead is pretty toxic, and then also asbestos is, an is a known carcinogen, and it's just, it's just worth it. It's, it's not worth uh, risking cancer or lead toxicity over. Just pay the extra 100 bucks. Um, you will also want to get some really good latex gloves. And these are great for stripping paint um, with known carcinogens. And uh, they also do a really good job of covering your cuffs, especially when it's paired up with this jacket. Um, so that way you don't get the mineral wool or uh, fiberglass on your um, on your skin. If you're doing denim, probably doesn't matter, so that's just pretty soft. But um, definitely fiberglass and mineral wool, you'll want uh, all this stuff, okay? So I'm gonna show you guys how to um, it's pretty self-explanatory uh, to install. 
Uh, what you'll need. I was looking for it. Mm, oh, there it is. Is a bread knife. Okay, and you'll cut it like you would a cake. It's really easy. And you cut it a little bit larger. Say these are 16 inch bats. You'll want to cut it a little. Usually they're, they're sized to the, um, the frames, but this old house is sometimes the framing is a little off than the 16 inches. But you'll cut it just a little bit larger than the frame um, if it doesn't fit in. And you'll stuff it in there and it'll just expand. So on this sticker one, I'm just going to show you how to um, fit it in around uh, electrical. Okay, because I'm also installing uh, new electrical lines in this room as well too. So I'll show you how to do that. I think you can pretty much get the idea of how this stuff works. Okay. All right, guys. So this is how you will um, install uh, rock wall, mineral wall uh, behind uh, wiring, and then uh, you'll probably figure out how to uh, install anywhere else after this. So um, there's your bat. Uh, I cut it down to just a smaller piece, just a little easier to work with uh, for when I'm trying to get around the wire. Um, so it's it's nice and rigid, uh, and then uh, you're already pre-cut for about 16 inches. And this is the wire that I've installed, and I want to get it installed around the wire. The wire runs in the middle between the two steps here. So I find the easiest way to do it is don your gloves on. Get your respirator on. Oh, and I forgot to mention it, but if all you got is a paper respirator, that's fine. But I find they usually kind of crap out on you, and they actually fog up a lot worse than the half mask. Uh, the only reason I'm wearing the half mask right now, it just allows me to talk a little bit easier. Otherwise, I totally would be going with the full mask, because your throat will get itchy um, when you're installing this stuff. And uh, even though this stuff is a lot safer to use than, say, the fiberglass, uh, it, uh, it still will irritate your, uh, your lungs and your throat. So respirator um, and then also the goggles because it'll make your eyes itch is uh, certainly a good idea. So let's get started shall we? All right so anyways I'll put on my gloves so then what I'll do I take my cake knife and then you'll cut the bat in half probably right down the middle and I take this, and then what I'll do is now, I'll just go ahead and tuck this half behind the wire and get it nice and installed in there. And then now, very simply, this part goes on top. And, ta-da! You have now insulated behind a wire. Very cool. So it's as simple as that, but it's a uh, it's a great product. Uh, it's a little more expensive than the uh, than the fiberglass um, at the same uh, R rating, um, and then you do have to uh, put a uh, vapor barrier on top of this where the uh, the uh, the fiberglass that bad and usually has the uh, the vapor barrier, the craft paper attached to it though. So. Um, but I still think um, at 33% uh, uh, more per square foot, it's worth it depending on the application. In this case, because of the soundproofing and the water resistance, uh, I really want it on, um, in this room. But um, I might actually do, uh, depending on uh, my budget, uh, fiberglass in, in other parts of the, um, the house, though. So um, Otherwise, like I said, great product. I would definitely consider it and super easy to install. So. Thank you very much for watching and uh, have a good day. Bye.